Hey. Hi. So we went to a movie theater. Yeah, we 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 braved COVID and went and saw a movie. We, we could did. have seen Jurassic Park, but no. <laughs> we wanted we went, something new. We wanted something new. We went and saw New Mutants. Oh, we saw it. We, yes, we, we did. We, did. <laughs> we saw New Mutants. Let me just start off by saying that I'm. it was just nice to be in a movie theater again. It was. It was, yeah, there was there was only six people in the theater, but it was nice to be in a theater experience. It really was. And you know, the way they're doing it, they're blocking off. So you have like the two seats, then the next two are blocked off, then two seats, and the next two, and so on and so forth. And then they checkerboard it all the way up to the top. And you know, it was fine. There was a couple couples in there, and uh, you know, it was just nice to to sit back and be in a theater again. Exactly. So. Seeing something with uh, with with coming attractions and the smell of popcorn and the sticky s floors and all that uh, and everything that. that goes along with being in a theater. I thought it was pretty interesting, too. You know, usually before the covid lockdown, we'd go to the theater and they would they show like 15 trailers. It felt like it, at least eight to ten. And there were only three last night. That's right. We got That's right. Uh, yeah, there weren't in it. Wonder Woman and that disaster movie with. Um, with the asteroids coming down. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, with what's his name from Three Hundred. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was it nice. Shows you how how impressed we were with it. Right, exactly. I was like, oh no, was this like a, a Roland Emmerich disaster movie? It looked better than a Roland Emmerich disaster movie. I will give it that. Yeah. Uh, Me <laughs> but it was great. It was almost like old times where they only showed two or three trailers and into the movie we go. So. Yeah, there weren't any there weren't any advertisements for M and M's or weren't any you know your your local car dealerships. It was just it was it was down to business. Yeah, yeah, it was. And uh, it's funny because I remember just before the shutdown, I was taking my daughter to a movie, and we were really pushing it. You know, it's like starting at three p.m. or something in the afternoon. It was already like five of three, and we're miles away. And I said, "This is going to be a close call." And my then seven year old daughter said, "Oh, come on, Dad, we got a half an hour." With all the trailers and commercials, don't worry about it. <laughs> so she caught on pretty quick that it's, you know, what what bothers me, is, and I know why they do it, because they want your ass in the seat when they show that stuff. But that should come before the start time. If the movie's supposed to start at three, start the movie at three. That's my favorite. Right, right. You know, because you end up. You know, you you budget your time accordingly, but you end up a half hour, forty five minutes late because of all that junk that's slammed in there. So let's get down to business. The new yeah, New Mutants is is a movie. It has a beginning, middle, and end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's uh, it, it it wasn't bad. It just wasn't that good. I, it was one of these things I like to call a missed opportunity. Um, I like the fact that they tried something completely different with it. It wasn't the, the you know, the Xavier school for gifted youngsters, you know, Oh, come on in, you know, we're going to teach you how to harness your powers and this and that. I like that. Yeah. It, that they were in this like sanitarium. Um, and it was the Essex corporation is behind the whole thing. Uh, Mr. Sinister there or whatever. I wish they'd ever show him. Um, I think one of the telling things about this movie is it's very low budget because they're in a sanitarium and there's one person there working in Dr. Ray. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. This was definitely done on the cheap. Yeah. There's, there's no, uh, you know, you think they'd at least have security. They'd have a couple of, of, you know, attendants or nurses, aides, if you will, some other, personnel. especially if you got such, such dangerous patients. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, you know, halfway through the movie, we find out that Danielle is so powerful. They got to put her down and, and, uh, she's all alone. This woman. So oh, spoilers, by the way, spoilers. Oh, we we, we've seen it. We've seen it. So you don't have to, <laughs> we should have I'm guessing. It. Yeah. If spoiler alert, I'll put it on the thumbnail. Spoiler alert. Um, so why don't we just kind of walk through it a little bit? The movie opens with uh, a young girl gets it, she gets her father wakes her up and uh, off they go because they're running from some kind of disaster, which they tell you is a tornado. 
uh, we find out later that it's not a tornado. Um, surprise. surprise. Yeah. She wakes up in a, uh, she wakes up in, in a, in a hospital. You know, and she's getting she's getting tests run on her by Dr. Cecilia Re- Reyes. 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 Oh, yes. Dr. Reyes. Dr. Reyes. Dr. Reyes. <laughs> Dr. Reyes. So basically, they're trying to figure out, you know, what what happened, what she saw. They they ask her pretty much off the bat. Do you know what a mutant is? And of course, you know, yeah, she she does. So in in, in this universe, the mutants and the X-Men are common knowledge. Right. Right. Um, she goes into these, they look like AA meetings or, or, um, these, um, like PTSD survivors, uh, groups. Yeah. It's just, this group therapy stuff Yeah, and meets the, uh, the other mutants in this facility. Um, and we're introduced to, um, to who become cannonball sunspot, uh, magic and wolfsbane. Um, Magic being the only new mutant who wasn't one of the original new mutants in the comic book. The other were all original new mutants from the comic book. Um, and a little trivia for you, if you don't know, uh, Ilya Rasputin is Peter Rasputin's sister, Peter Rasputin being Colossus of the X-Men. So that's He's the- right, comrade. Yes. So there's a little tie there for eagle-eyed comic book fans. Um, And here they are in the therapy session there. Um, My problem here, the movie completely bogs down right here. Yeah, it was of these scenes and they go nowhere. They go nowhere. What all we learn from that is um, that cannonballs got some kind of weird PTSD problem. He's got some issue going on. He's got this guilt complex. We've got uh, sunspot. Who's just cocky and looking to uh, nail every one of the girls. Um, we've got magic, uh, rescue in there. Who's just like a, a jerk. <laughs> yeah. She's got a huge chip on her shoulder. She is definitely a bully. And we meet, uh, rain who's Wolfsbane and rain is very sensitive. And actually the only one who seems a little caring here out of the whole group. Um, the only Which one has who- a payoff later on. Sort right. of. Right. <laughs> so, um, immediately, uh, we have, uh, Danielle, our new character, Tasked with, you know, hey, the doors are they're open. You can leave whenever you want. She gets played by uh, magic and runs into a force field, revealing that they are actually prisoners in some kind of a sanitarium, if you will. Yeah, it's 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 not a hospital. It's a cage, I believe, is actually one of the lines. Right. So Danielle, now tortured by nightmares, as they all are, decides I'm just going to jump off the clock tower. And gets talked out of it by Rain, Wolfsbane. And they quickly become really good friends. Really close friends. Yeah. Really close friends. You know, I'm watching that scene. They're on the clock tower. And I picked up on it right away. And I'm like, oh, no. They're not They're not going to do this, are they? Now, keep in mind that they're establishing that these girls are somewhere between the ages of 13 and 15-ish. Yeah, they, 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 the, the actresses themselves are in their 20s, but they look like they're 13, 14, and they have a lot of references to puberty and that special time. Right. Oh, and they, you know, as we all know from, you know, reading the comics and or watching the X-Men movies, they have made it a point that your mutant powers usually manifest themselves at puberty. So, you know, Danielle is having you know, her first bouts with coming to grips with being a mutant. So they suddenly have a really uncomfortable scene for me. I was squirming. Yeah, I wasn't particularly, if, if you're going to describe the scene, I know exactly which one you're talking about. And this, it, it was, it was unpleasant. It was not unpleasant is the wrong word. Uncomfortable it was because they were supposed to be 13. They, and they look it. I mean, these two girls might be 20 years old, but they look 14 years old. And there's a shower scene. And they're in the shower together. And, and the scene serves absolutely no purpose. And I was just crazy. It shows off that Wolfsbane has has a, a W oh, branded onto her shoulder. They could have been or, or an upside down M. Werewolf, mutant, take your pick. Oh, I never, I never considered the upside down M. Right. 
Um, yeah, because it turns out to be an M an M when she gets branded later on. Spoilers when she gets branded again in the movie. Right, right. Um, so I think my brain was melting by that point. Um, yeah, yeah. So they have this really awkward shower scene. Uh, you know, and then Danielle leaves the shower, leaves Wolfsbane alone, and then she has some kind of a a vision of something horrible happening and all the kids start having these nightmares and visions of something horrible happening and nobody can explain why and you're not quite sure if it's it is a dream or if it's actually manifesting itself physically yeah if it's if the place is just just haunted you know but it clearly you know it, they they establish it right from the get-go that it's not a kind place so maybe there's something in the air right right kind of reminded me of shutter island the way the whole place looked and felt uh, mm. So, you know, as it progresses, I mean, and the first two acts are painfully slow. I mean, oh, God, yeah, I was, was actually starting to, like, fight drowsiness. I was like, stay awake. This is going to go somewhere, right? <laughs> it was very slow. Um, and, you know, the whole time Dr. Reyes is monitoring, she's, she's spying on them all with cameras, and she's got them all fitted with uh, monitors that monitor their their heart rate, their pulse, their brain activity, all this kind of stuff. And it's going back to the Essex Corporation and they're sending orders based on the readings that they're getting. Um, she finally gets a, an order that she has to put Danielle down because her mutant power is too powerful. And apparently that she can, that she can basically summon the fears of everybody around her and, and, and manifest them, which is turns out to be again, spoilers. What is going on? Everybody's everybody's fears are manifesting because Danny is there. That's her power. Right. So now at this point, we're well past an hour into the movie and there's about 20 minutes left when we actually get to the crux of the story. Um, and Danielle is being gassed to death by Dr. Reyes. And she gets freed by her compadres and summons the demon bear, which is her greatest fear. This this demon bear that her father used to tell her about as a kid. And the thing comes smashing into the, the place and eats Dr. Reyes and generally wreaks havoc until Danielle gets her faculties, composes herself and says, please stop. And Go away, bear. Go away, bear. Bad bear. Bad bear. Bad it, bear. Didn't it feel like someone like scolding a dog? It what? did. It did. <laughs> it, 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 it was, it was, there was a, a scene from an episode of Doctor Who that kind of reminded he, he, he winds up beating the, the, the monster of the week is a little kid and he winds up telling, go to your room. That's exactly what it felt like. That 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 that, that kind of what it dog. felt like. It's basically, bad dog, go to your room. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for her to hit the, the bear with a rolled up newspaper. You know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the kids are out there going, "What's a newspaper?" Um. So yeah, and then you know, problem solved, and they find out that the oh, you know, the force field that was around the hospital by the way was actually a force field that dr reyes projected because we find out at some point during this whole kerfuffle as they try to save danielle she puts force fields around each of them and starts to suffocate them all yeah, um, she's a pretty powerful mutant herself herself but now she got eaten by a fake bear so so all the so the the force fields are down they've heard rumor that the nearest town is 20 miles away hey you want to find out and they go walking into the sunset the end and there will be no the more end. no more new mutants movies nor will they end up as x-men because this movie sat on a shelf for almost three years and now we know why yeah it was it's it wasn't very good it was it was kind of drawn out i mean i suppose maybe if i if uh, if, if i was if i was a if i was a a younger kid a teenager this probably would have been considered really scary you know and and considering that you know mutants are generally more accepted by you know, because you're different, being you know, you're 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 gay, you're you're a, a different nationality, you're just a plain old teenager. It, it, I might not have been the 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 target audience. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much. Don't know. Maybe it was just a bad movie. <laughs> to me, it felt like a um a CW movie that was brought into the theater. It was almost like. Mm. You know, Riverdale the movie or some something like that where they you know definitely the target audience was kids who watch those kind of shows I think yeah uh, 
you know, you had the kid from Stranger Things playing Cannonball. And um, I guess this is a good point to talk about the characters weren't quite right. Um, Cannonball was the biggest one for me was completely ruined. Um, I know he's supposed to be a gangly, awkward teenager who's really struggling with his power. But this guy, he basically did the same thing he did in Stranger Things. Is just walk around in over emote. <laughs> um, hey, man, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Uh, I was disappointed. I thought Sunspot looked great when he was Sunspot. But he's Sunspot for a grand total of 35 seconds, I think, in this film. He flames up twice. Yeah, he if for a very short amount of time, it does absolutely nothing. He's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> He's expensive. Right. Um, who else? Demon bears don't pay for themselves, you know? Well, clearly the budget went into the, the climax of the film. I wouldn't even say the third act. I'll just say the climax of the film. Um, I, I thought magic was by far the highlight of the movie. She looked just like the comic book character physically. I didn't like the spoiled brat attitude of she had, um, but she's pretty rebellious in the comics. You know, she's pretty reckless. And when she actually fought the demon bear and her puppet of Lockheed, the dragon was actually a dragon on her shoulder, just like the book. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And you know, when the, her arm would metallicize and become the sword looked really good. Um, so I really enjoyed magic except for the, the bratty shenanigans that went on a little too long with her before she softened. Um, Rain Wolfsbane, I thought was really, really well done. I liked her too. Yeah, she's a really, do a, a really uh, accomplished actress. Yes, and they could, they could have used a little bit more of the wolf, but again, money takes money. To do that, you know, nobody really gets to flex their muscles except for magic in this whole thing. Um, you know, the rest of them have get to use spotty. E even Dr. Reyes only has one scene where she really uses her powers, you know? So it definitely felt constrained by its budget. Um, which I think caused the pacing problems they had early on in the movie because they couldn't, mm -hmm. they couldn't do anything except talk. All they did was talk, you know, and they all had the same kind of, issue all of them they're okay we get it you're all awkward teenagers going through puberty and 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 mutant you're mutant in whatever you'd say mutants the uh, but do we need to talk about it for 60 minutes yeah and then there's 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 multiple scenes of them of them escaping or rebelling to different parts of the sanitarium where they supposedly can't be seen so they're having a scene over here where they're all talking and getting to know each other and then they have a scene over here where they're talking to each other and right. getting to know each other it, it's it basically the there's there's i would say that there's three i don't even remember the specifics of them there's one with a lie detector the lie but i don't right yep and that scene gets truncated for some reason which i don't really remember already i mean it's a day later and i'm struggling to remember a lot of this. yeah i have the wikipedia page open because i really don't remember it was it i don't remember a lot of what was going on i mean i remember spe uh, specific moments right i remember some of the effects kind of but it's 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 kind of like you know bad fast food you're 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 hungry a half hour later i don't even remember eating it <laughs> <laughs> you're right right yeah i mean it started okay started with a bang I was interested, you know, when she first woke up in the hospital and what's going on here. But then it was scene after scene after scene of exposition dumps and and teen angst. And I was getting a little bored with it. Um, you know, I know there's been a lot of issues out there with the casting, um, particularly of Sunspot and Reyes. Um, but they're, you know, Sunspot is supposed to be from Brazil and the actors from Brazil so okay you know it's yeah some like people have a problem with that actor and why i don't know we're in the day of you know no matter what you do it's just not good enough right um you know you're not doing a faithful comic adaptation you're doing your own interpretation of it um taking that stuff off a 1983 comic book and trying to make it screen accurate is very difficult to do um, 
I, I didn't really have a problem with the casting. I had more of a problem with the way the characters were actually portrayed, and they they most mo they did hardly anything in the film. So lost opportunity. The only other thing I think we should touch on there was <laughs> uh, an issue with crediting the the creator of stuff. yeah so bob mcleod um accomplished marvel writer and artist uh you know tweeted his his thoughts yesterday um uh, starting here i was very excited when i heard they were making a new mutants movie i thought making it into a horror movie was perhaps an interesting idea but not at how all the characters should be introduced to the public at large but hey my characters are in a movie I never would have thought that would actually happen, but then I was disappointed when they didn't give Danny braids, although I like Blue Hunt. I was disappointed when Rain wasn't a redhead with spiky hair, although I adore Macy Williams. Now, she kind of had reddish hair. It was too dark. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, well, the whole movie's very dark. The cinematography's not the greatest. Um, I was disappointed that Sam isn't tall and gawky. Yeah, me too. Although I do like Charlie Heaton. Charlie Heaton's fine, like I said, but... They just took the character from Stranger Things and dropped him into this movie. He's exactly the same. Uh, but mainly, I was very disappointed that Roberto isn't short and dark-skinned. Yet another example of Hollywood whitewashing. There's just no excuse. Now, I'm I'm sorry, Bob. i got to disagree with you on that. Um, the kid's from Brazil. I I'm sorry if he's just not dark enough for you. And I don't see what the problem is with making him tall. And they, they made him kind of, you know... He's like AC Slater in this movie. It's like a Saved by the Bell thing, you know. Like <laughs> he's a cool stud. He's like the jock, and um, yeah, comes from a rich family, and you know, right. And he's he's yeah. carefree because he's a trust fund kid, and he's and he's a you know he's a skirt hound. He's just he wants to, he wants to have sex with all the girls. So whatever. He's a he's a teenage guy. Come on, you know the. We had this with Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine. He was a foot too tall. Did anybody have a problem with that? Fuck no. Because he, you know why? Nailed it. Um, I, I think maybe if they made Roberto, if they gave Roberto more to do in the movie, he might not have said something like this. So yeah, he, he he's kind of he he's, he's kind of there. He washes dishes. He pouts for a scene, and then then he finally gets to become a CGI character the one scene that bothered me at the end when the bear is trashing the chapel and he's hiding under a pew really that drove me yeah nuts. that drove me nuts like come on man this guy's like he's like the human torch what, what, what's he hiding for come on man. that was just that pissed me off you want to complain about something they did wrong with roberto that's what they did wrong with roberto uh, so basically Josh Boone erased everything I contributed to the way the characters look. And now the movie has come out at last. And apparently they've credited someone named Bob MacLeod as creator. Or MacLeod. MacLeod. Um, they couldn't spell his name right. You can see the spelling of his name is right chow. Right chow. And they put an M-A-C. So, um, Yeah. And I wouldn't necessarily blame the director, although he ultimately has complete control over this. But that's whoever did the titles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just still boiled. I mean, the 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 buck stud does stop with the director, though. The director should have said it's some it's, or, or somebody along the line should have said, "Hey, wait a second, that's wrong." I agree. So, you know, overall, on a scale of one to five, one being the worst, five being one to five. What would you give the new mutants? One to five. Two, maybe. Yeah, I'm. Going. I mean, it, if you want to, if you want to go to the movies and see something new, I mean, it's it's there. Right. It's it's there. It's not. It's it's it's. You're not going to be blown away by it, unless you're a kid. Maybe maybe. You know, if I was still a teenager, I, I would think this was the greatest thing on the planet. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I'm going to go with you. I'll give it up to a two because I'll give it a two because it was a valiant effort to do something different. We've had nine X-Men movies and it, I'm glad they tried something completely. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Definitely give it points for, for trying something completely different and different is, is not always good. And it, it, 
it didn't really hurt it in this case. It it was it just it didn't quite live up to its potential. I agree. I also will go with a two for a solid two because the casting was good. I thought all the yeah they were all solid the actors. actors were solid actors. Um, and I really I did like those um those CGI monsters that were chasing. Oh, the the, yeah. the smile men. Yeah, the smile. I men. believe they're called. Yeah, those were cool. I wish there was more of those. Voiced by Marilyn Manson. Right, enough. right. Um, and and lastly, um, I did like the um, when you got finally got to see them all fight the, the demon bear and stuff. And I think all this to get it to a two, I think we were actually aided by the fact that we were sitting in a movie theater watching it, and it was kind of like you could have showed me a steaming pile of shit just sitting there for ninety minutes, and I probably would have said, "I'll give that a two because I'm in the movies." Yeah, I think yeah, that that definitely helped. I think I if if that was something on a small screen, I probably would have given up after about thirty five minutes. Yeah, exactly. That first yeah. act drag so bad, I probably would have shut it off. The shower scene, I probably would have said, "Okay, that's enough. I'm done with that." Yeah, and we didn't even go into the fact that they made the two girls, Rain and Danielle, uh, lovers, a couple. And and again, you know, that bothered me on the the level that they're normalizing stuff like that at such a young age. And I'm just thinking, what if my daughter was 12 or 13 watching this? Um, I was uncomfortable. Yeah. It's yeah. The, uh, under, if, if they were older characters and they, and they, and then they, they, they went out of their way to explain that these are the older students. Okay, fine. But they do really heavily imply that they're only a 13 or 14 years old. And it's, 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 it's a little uncomfortable. You know, the, the fact that, that 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 they do hook up nothing wrong with that but the fact that they're so young it's the it's their age and yeah it's really bothered me it had p to the e to the d to the o implications hanging all over the top of it and that's yeah that's the unfortunate thing yeah i can't justify that will not so all right well um if you saw the new mutants and you disagree with us um drop us a line if you saw the new mutants and you agree with us drop us a line so We'll do more of these. This was fun. This was fun. There's plot. There's 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 movies eventually coming out. Tenants coming out soon. Uh, Wonder Woman's coming out soon. I didn't see the original Wonder Woman, so I'm gonna have to do my homework before seeing Wonder Woman eighty four. Um, a good homework. Yeah, you'll love. I, I really love that movie. It's good. Okay. Yeah. So and then maybe a little Bill and Ted. And a little Bill and Ted. That's playing. That's playing. Uh, it's playing in my town. Yes. So with that, I will use a Bill and Ted, be excellent to each other, and party on, dude. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe, make sure you click the little bell icon to be notified anytime someone from our show drops new content here. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.